The 1942-43 Battle of Stalingrad is acknowledged as one of the great turning points of World War II, when the Red Army finally stopped Hitler's advance into the Soviet Union, throwing him permanently onto the defensive on the Eastern Front. A calamitous defeat for the Germans and a personal humiliation for Hitler's leadership style and his often irrational military decisions that had led to the defeat. The German 6th Army and parts of the 4th Panzer Army were removed from the German order of battle, losing over 300,000 men killed, wounded and taken prisoner. At the time, it was also acknowledged by the other Allies as a turning point and the British made an extraordinary gesture to Stalin and the Soviet people to mark their sacrifice and victory that did so much to aid the Western Allies as well. Winston Churchill, the British Prime Minister, always the showman, backed the idea of presenting Stalin with that most evocative of weapons, an English broadsword, but no ordinary sword, rather a finely crafted bejeweled triumph of swordsmithing that would stand for Britain's eternal thanks to the Soviet people. The Sword of Stalingrad was designed by Oxford Don Reginald Gledo and approved by King George VI, in whose name it was presented to the Soviet people. The Wilkinson Sword Company created the blade for the double-edged medieval-style two-handed longsword, which was four feet long and silversmith, Corporal Leslie Durbin of the Royal Air Force, designed the silver crossguard. Made of the finest Sheffield steel, the hand grip was bound in 18 karat gold wire, and the sword's pommel was made of rock crystal with an embedded gold rose of England. The ends of the silver crossguards were modelled as leopard's heads. The sword's scabbard was made of Persian lambskin dyed crimson, decorated with the royal arms in silver gilt, with five silver mounts and three rubies mounted on golden stars. It took nine craftsmen three months to make this beautiful weapon. The blade was acid etched in Russian and English, with the following inscription. To the steel-hearted citizens of Stalingrad, the gift of King George VI, in token of the homage of the British people. It was decided that Churchill would present the sword personally to Stalin in the presence of American President Roosevelt during the 1943 Tehran Conference in Iran, when the leaders were finalizing the plans for the D-Day invasion of France scheduled for June 1944. The site of the meeting was the Soviet Embassy in Tehran, the date the 29th of November 1943. Stalin, Churchill and Roosevelt met in a large conference room, flanked by a British and Soviet honour guard. The British contingent consisted of a lieutenant and 15 men from the Buffs, the Royal East Kent Regiment, while the Soviet honour guard was made up of 22 Red Army officers. Churchill wore uniform that day, as he was an honorary air commodore in the Royal Air Force and everyone waited in silence as God Save the King was played, followed by the Internationale. He turned to Stalin and announced, I am commanded to present this sword of honour as a token of homage of the British people. The British lieutenant then stepped forward and handed Churchill the sword. Stalin took it and kissed the scabbard, muttering his thanks. Stalin handed it to Marshal Clement Voroshilov, the hero of Stalingrad, the wrong way up, the sword falling out, the marshal moving deftly to retrieve it. The sword was then shown to President Roosevelt, who drew it from its scabbard and held it up, saying, Truly they had hearts of steel. This sword is now on public display at the Battle of Stalingrad Museum in Volgograd. Interestingly, during the Cold War, the sword even returned to Britain three times for public display, showing just how important Stalingrad remained in the consciousness of both countries despite their animosities in the modern period. 
Three copies of the sword were later made by the Wilkinson Sword Company, one being housed in the Company Museum in London. One copy was given to the Americans and was recently put up for sale. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.